Thursday. It's lit sock. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back um, after half term. We hope you all had a nice one. It's very sunny outside, and we're uh, in here in our gloof of the um, library, but nonetheless, with a very famous portrait. Today, we are talking about Mr. Humphrey's guru, great man, Chris Riddell. Anybody read Chris Riddell? Uh huh, uh huh, yeah. Yeah, we've seen his illustrations anyway for perhaps Neil yeah. Gaiman's books. Yeah, anyway. yeah, you will have, yeah. The fascinating and amazing yeah. Absolutely. Over to you, Mr. Thank Thompson. you very Thank much. You. Yeah, so there we go. Let's just... <laughs> there we go. Shall I do it from behind you? Yeah, why not? <laughs> but yeah, of course. So, hello, Lulu. Um, so yeah, obviously this is this took centre stage, didn't it? It did. That last Let's Talk, it was... It was uh, Oh yeah, have you seen how many we've had? Ninety-two views. Yeah, ninety-two. I think I yeah. think the word was spread. Yeah. Very effectively. Yeah. Mhm. Mm I wonder how Famous. many. Of, I wonder how many of them solved it before you guys mm. did. <laughs> <laughs> I was. It was, I was saying. It was. It was. It was. Um, I, I take that back. I take that back. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm defending myself. Okay, fair enough. Fair Anybody enough. who hasn't seen it, it's uh, the murder mysteries devised yeah. by. Lulu Beale and uh, we are uh, yes still available on YouTube along with everything else yeah so absolutely and watch then, if you like a murder mystery and this took centre stage in it yeah this took centre stage so I, I, I suppose I should start by talking about this I, now I have mentioned it I've been passing a few times <laughs> so I went to a school library conference back in 2019 so four years ago now Oof, long time ago, long time ago. and Chris Rudell was the keynote speaker um, I'll talk more about just how brilliant he was at that in a minute. But this came about because in the evening, a few of us went for a drink, including him. And it was about four or five of us around a table. And he just said, would anyone like me to draw them? And, uh, and I said, yes, please, as did everyone else around what the table. I know he, he is a lovely man. Mm. And there we go. So, uh, you know, I don't know... Uh, what likeness. your opinion is miss milton certainly didn't like it remember miss milton she she certainly had was quite critical of it but yeah it's it is um it captures me very well i think mm. and uh yeah and I, I think he did it in it couldn't have been anything more than about 15 minutes mm. 15 minutes max i would say probably less because he did it quite a few people um but when he was talking he he's he is a very friendly very approachable lovely man and when he was talking, so when he was talking to us, we were all like, you know, sat in this big room and he was sat at the front and he was drawing as he was talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had the whole room enraptured. We were all listening to him as he was illustrating and he was doing these complex pictures. He was telling a story as he was as he was um, doing it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, so he talked about how because he was children's laureate as well. You all know mm -hmm. what the children's laureate is, I hope. Yeah. So when he was children's laureate, he went to speak to not the prime minister at the time whoever that was david cameron possibly yeah. well whoever, whoever was he didn't speak to the prime minister he went to speak to another government minister mm. uh, <laughs> and i'm not going to do this justice you had to be there but he was he basically he just drew these sort of these figures this very stern looking man behind a, um, a desk mm -hmm. accompanied by two sort of junior ministers yeah. who looked like you know <laughs> and and he said, oh yes, so and he did an impersonation of the the minister in question. He's saying, oh yes, Chris. So the way I see it is, any any good school library should pass the fielding test. And of course, the fielding test. I say, of course, the fielding test means that it should have, um, yeah, Henry Fielding, but you know, for like you know, serious literature from the past. But you know, in terms of like you know, lighter, fluffy fiction, Helen Fielding, Bridget oh, Jones's Diary. Yes. And so, so obviously, Chris Riddell's reaction was like. Oh, you know, this, we're talking about school libraries here. Imagine if mm, all, all I yes. could give you were those mm. books or, or similar. Yeah. That would just be woefully inadequate. Mm. So obviously he had, he had chat to him. And, and I can't remember. See, this is this is why, you know, it's not a particularly good anecdote because I can't remember how Chris Riddell managed to win them round. But mm. as he described winning them round, he altered the expressions on the faces. So like, you know, a little smile appeared on the bored looking mm. man, the eyebrows raised at the bored looking woman. So it, and he was doing this whilst talking to us and telling a story. Mm. And that's just one example. He was doing this for an hour. And then he was talking about how when he gets his book signed, you know, he, he has a long queue. You know, if, if you've been to author events, year seven, you know about how we had Zoran Farouk and, yeah. you know, how uh, he just sat there and he would just sit there and have, he'd have a, an hour long queue and he would just make time for everyone and talk to them. So he is, he's a, he's a really wonderful guy. And of course, a very talented illustrator. 
and a very talented author because his, his style is very distinctive. So, you know, you've all read, I'm going to hand over to you to talk about the books, seeing between you seem to have read them all. But I just thought I'd show you, just to show you, you know instantly that he did this, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, this is unmistakably him. So he is a cartoonist for, he's the official cartoonist for The Observer. And he does, he does like a political cartoon every Sunday. Now, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get too political here. It's not my place to, but he is, he is rather critical. He of does our, capture the zeitgeist. Our, yes, yeah. indeed. So therefore, he is rather critical of our current government, as many of us are. And so this this is a, a cartoon <laughs> about... So he about did Eurovision. Eurovision. It's Eurovision week. Coincide with Eurovision. He's called it eurovision And, you know, we've got a very unflattering, you know, we've got a slug... We've got a sort of gruesome-looking ogre, a crocodile, and they are singing um, song, famous songs from yesteryear, still making our minds up. You know, Bucks Fizz, making our minds up. Uh, Bad Knocks a Puppet on a String, Sandy Shaw, <laughs> and Boo Bang Wimper, because obviously it's like, you know, rubbish stories. And someone is saying, nil point, nil point. So there you go, there's, there's one. And then just to show you that he's very good at actually capturing actual likenesses, you all know who this is, I, I'm sure, Yes. Yeah, Vladimir Putin, and this was when he, you know, <laughs> when was this done? Back in February. So essentially, yeah, his... One year birthday of the war. Precisely. Yeah. Yes, there you go. And uh, Which, of course, has just got even worse. It has. It has. So, you know, um, so that, that one's a bit more Ukraine serious. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yes, as is Chris Riddell, see? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, obviously this is a slightly more serious one, but, you know, the reason I picked this one out, I could have picked out many, many... But it's a very good, as you say, it's a very good it's likeness. It's an extremely yeah. good likeness, yeah. and, you know, as as is that, and as are all the distinctive characters. Uh, so the last thing I'll talk about before we go into the books. Um, so I, I just got his bio here. I didn't know anything about his bio, really. No, um, but, I didn't either. But it's quite interesting. Mm. Okay, so he was born in 1962 in Cape Town, South Africa. Oh, right. Where his father was a liberal Anglican vicar and was opposed mm. to apartheid, the system mm. of apartheid that was in place in South Africa at the time. Uh, the family returned to England when Chris was one year old. Well, he spent the rest of his childhood with his sister and three brothers who now live in South Africa, Brighton and Egypt. So he's got family all over the world. He attended Archbishop Tennyson's Grammar School in Kennington, so not too far from here. Um, he displayed artistic talent from an early age and was encouraged in this by his mother. So thank you, um, Chris Riddell's mother. Mm. She gave him a paper and pen to keep quiet during his father's sermons. <laughs> <laughs> he's obviously... Uh, a li- a, a li- yeah, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Um, now, as a child, he admired the work of Sir John, Ten- Sir John Tenniel. Now, he's the first illustrator of Alice in Wonderland. You know, okay. his famous yeah. illustrations. Yeah, sure, they, they are, yeah. again, in, you'd instantly recognise them, just like you'd instantly recognise Chris Riddell's stuff, really, um, and W. Heath Robinson. So, yeah, you, if he was an influence, so Alice in Wonderland. Well, he's very much line drawing, isn't he? Yes, and, oh, and, uh, he, of course, that's what Chris Riddell hugely. is mm-hmm. best known for, yeah. Line drawings, of course. When he was when he does his live demos, it, it's mm. very much pencil because mm. obviously they're, they're coloured. Yeah. But you can see the clear influence, I would say, of the Alice in Wonderland mm. style with mm. his illustrations. Mm. Um, uh, so he went to Brighton Polytechnic where he studied illustration, and well, one of his now that's interesting because oh, you one tell of his me teachers, teachers was Briggs. there. We go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Raymond Briggs, yeah. of course, the Snowman, Father Christmas, Ethel and Ernest. Yeah, I grew up in Brighton, and Raymond Briggs was was. The God at Brighton Polly, he just was, yeah. and we had all his books the moment they and he came in and signed them, and he was just fabulous. Yeah. And you've all you've all seen the Snowman, I'm sure, at Christmas time. Yes, and Mr. Bogeyman, do you know him? Yeah, he is disgusting. If he, if he <laughs> as as the, the event, name implies, he is absolutely disgusting. Worth seeking out for the horror shock. Um, shock horror. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Father Christmas, and also things for older, like Ethel and Ernest, I just mentioned, mm. when the whistle when the wind blows, blows, when the wind blows, blows sorry. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so he was his teacher. Mm. So there you go. So you can see the pedigree there. Mm. Uh, so yeah, he, he illustrated for The Economist in the 1980s. So he's been doing, he's been doing this for longer than we might realise. Mm. And at The Observer, he started The Observer in 1995. And in 2002, he named his influences, named his influence Tenniel, of course, E. H. Seppard, uh, the first illustrator of Winnie the Willows and Winnie the Pooh as well. Mm. So, yeah. you know, yeah. is it a hybrid of Winnie the Pooh and uh, Alice in Wonderland? Yeah. Possibly. Good. Um, Good antecedents. Yeah. Yes. So he, li- so he lives in Brighton. Um, oh, and does he? Yes, oh, he does. And his wife, uh, Joanne Burroughs, is an illustrator and printmaker. So there you go. Mm. And his daughter... Katie is also a children's book illustrator. Oh. So there we go. So he kept, uh, kept it in the family. So there you go. So there's, there's, so we now know a lot more about him mm, yes. than we did before. Yeah, we do. 
So, uh, who would like to, would like to sit sit in the seat first then and talk about, talk about something? It. Marianne. Marianne. Go on, Marianne. Kick us off. Okay, let me... In case, uh, in case anyone's already missed Kia's, I just noticed we have a year 11 in the audience. She's very impressed. She's very impressed. impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Is that yours? Uh, yes. Let's push it. Let's do it. So what are you going to talk about? Um, so I've got Otterline, a book of Otterline, and a book of Goth Girl. Um, when I was in primary school, I spent all my time at the library. When I say all my time, I was then gifted a Reader of the Year award by wow. my library teacher. Perhaps we should institute a Reader of the Year award. <laughs> I, think, I, think it, I, think, I think it was out That's of pity at this idea. point. I, I, <laughs> no, no, I'm sure it was to encourage you and further I, endeavours. I, <laughs> yeah, so I spent all my lunch times at the library. It was really sad. Um, and Goth Girl was one of my favourite books to read mm-hmm. because it's, I mean, one, it's so iconic it's with funny, all the... All the tropes. With all the tropes, with all the, I- like, genuinely iconic characters. Like, and it's just, it's so... Show some of the illustrations. Um, like, like, here you go. There's, yeah. It's just... It's so <laughs> gothic, but yes. at the same time, it's so children's book. Mm. And I loved how it was kind of just so silly at the same, but at the same time, it was like like sensible. Mm. Like you were talking about Alice in Wonderland and how that impacted. Yeah, it definitely impacted some of his characters as well because, like in Goth Girl, she is only she's only allowed to wear massive chunky boots because <laughs> her father is is always wants to hear where she is and. <laughs> No, it's it's slightly, and she always has tea with him at three o'clock on a Thursday. I think it is <laughs> in these in these massive. It's um, also very English eccentric, then. Yeah, yeah. In, in English the English ex- yeah, of, yeah, I would say Chris Adele in all of his books, you mm. see elements of that. Yeah, it's it's absolutely, yeah. and then and then I think in this one there's like a yeah a ball here, and you can see everyone arriving, mm. and then they have this train that goes around the table, and like here. And it's just it's it's so eccentric that looks and, and, doesn't it? Yeah, and wonderful. And some of the characters make you want to throw the book across the across the room <laughs> and just groan in your hands. And some of them they're just it's absolutely eccentric and I love Chris Riddell for this because one, there are so many and they're like hmm. basically they're they're basically the same premise and it's just hmm. oh that that hits the spot, you know. Um as and as as well as Otterline at Otterline, it it's Otterline. It's the same kind of eccentric little adventures with eccentric little characters. Yeah, that's a very good like, one, isn't it? Like, there's a bear here, and oh, yeah. she's listening to all the voices with the bear. Oh. And it, it's, it's, very, it's very much what I loved as a year three, spending all my time in the library. Um, and I, I genuinely, I, I loved these books. Like, I, I could not get enough of them. I read, I read this one particularly at least five times. So that one is Goth That's Girl the first one. and, and the, the Ghost, Ghost of a Mouse. Mouse. Which is the first one. Which is yeah. the first, yeah. And, yeah, so... And also, like, mm. the Yellow Cat is the first of the... Yeah. So you recommend them? Absolutely. Children of all ages? Children of all ages. They're, yeah. they're absolutely brilliant, especially they, with the illustrations. They're also mm. fun and lovely. Mm. Yeah, he, he creates, uh, again, the, you know, the canvas that he creates is a very immersive world. And it's just mm. a world, as you say, it's a world of wonder, a world of magic. But also. Charles Babbage makes an appearance. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the kind of just. Ada Lovelace? Oh, I, I, think, I think at one point it is implied that her mother was. No, no, there was an Ada Lovelace. Well, of course. But Lord was, Byron, who does make yeah. an appearance, doesn't he? I think he does. No, because I think. Maybe uh, not. No, he does. He does because I just saw a picture. Because of course, it's her, his daughter, mm-hmm. Ada. Yeah. Became a very good mathematician and computer, yeah. mm-hmm. an early computer, because of her mother. Her mother was very, very good at maths. Mm. So I can't remember her, mother, her mother's name. Augusta, maybe. Anyway, um, that's uh, yeah. When I was teaching Arcadia, I had to learn about Ada and Charles Babbage. Mm. It's a lot of fast computer yeah. programmer. Yeah. So great big things, but also the small little things too. Exactly, the, 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 the little, the little, little details. Spice, you know? Yes, absolutely. And some of the characters. So who, who are some of the characters that you mentioned? Um, the... Okay, let's 
I mean, I mean, one, there's a vampire here who has just eaten some garlic. That's that's a pretty that's a pretty oh good emotion to be betraying. Um, so it's it's just oh. so here is Charles Babbage. I mm-hmm. think it's Charles Babbage. Um, and again, it's the train, and it's and it's her just kind of sitting there going, "What on earth is going on?" <laughs> As with any of us, because <laughs> it's all just these eccentric characters who all come in in their massive. Massive carriages, and they come into a house. And then there's the vampire uh, governess. As Miss Hunt will tell you, everything is gothic. Every, everything, <laughs> everything is gothic. And it's just because totally does spotlighting it. The chimney sweeps, which are oh, people. Right. Nope. Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, so lots of influences, aren't there? Victorian, yeah. gothic Absolutely. literature. Yeah. Yeah, slightly creepy cook. babies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> which would you? Yeah, it's, mm. it's, it's just kind of, like, kind of edging on slightly. You know, it's the kind of. Uh. Mm. Have you got a preference, Goth Girl or Otterline? I have to say Goth Girl because yeah. Goth Girl was the original one that I picked up, mm. and Otterline came after. Yeah, mm-hmm. they did. Goth yeah. Girl in my heart, you know. Okay, <laughs> of course. Uh, who else has read it then? Josie's. Josie, do you want to come? Do you want to? Do you want to maybe say a bit? Yeah. About another one or... oh, no, I, I can just go see. Yeah, so we've got all the sequels as well, if you want to pick up one of those. Oh, oh, oh she's got oh, her own oh, ones! Well done. Um, and I also have the World Tiny Book World Book Day. Oh, oh, excellent. Oh, excellent. Um, I remember, like, Goth Girl being, like, some of the first books that I just... I remember... Like not wanting to sleep, reading it yeah. like before going to bed, and then waking up as early as possible <laughs> just to read it. Um, I think I really like the first Goth Girl book. I I think my favorite one is probably the second book. Right. Uh, a bit worse than death. Yeah, I I just really I really love the bear in it. She's just so lovely, and I love. I think what I love about, and I also, I love, um, because, like, in the first book, there's quite a b- lot of, like, Ada, like, exploring the house, but she's, mm-hmm. like, quite alone. Mm. And then in the second book, there's more of her, like, befriending other children, and they have, like, a secret, like, society in the <laughs> attic. And I think that's a really fun <laughs> idea. Mm. Um, and... I also loved the vampire. I thought it was really fun that she was, like, teaching Ada how to fight with an umbrella on the roof. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was fabulous that was illustration. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's what it's, they call a summative picture, isn't it? Yeah, it's wonderful. Also, look, she looks so familiar, doesn't she? She just reminds mm-hmm. me of somebody. Christy Jones, maybe? That's probably deliberate yeah, on his part. Yeah, probably is, yeah. Um, so that second one is, is yeah. a pun in the title, isn't it? Yeah. Because you know, when you say fate worse than death, it doesn't actually mean no. that, that kind of fate. It means the other kind of fate. Yeah. Oh, it's the fate it? as in bizarre or yeah, um, as, in, as in like summer you know fate, summer yeah. fate. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so it's a summer fate that's worse than death. Because <laughs> obviously, it's the, you know, they, they are a bit more obviously it's called goth girl, but it's like it's light, it's lighter hearted than you know some of the Dracula. Darkest, okay. Dracula <laughs> Dare I say it, the Castle of Otranto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, if you think about the Castle of Otranto, it's actually hilarious, isn't it? It is, actually, on. yeah. Unless, maybe, of course, maybe, you're actually in it. Maybe even more hilarious than Gothic, who knows? Mm. But anyway, yeah, sorry, yeah, Karen. Yeah, just. I think a really good illustration of example of Perlin oh, yes, to definitely. Umbrella Fight is... Yeah, it's <laughs> but, um, There you go, better than Quidditch or anything like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Just, <laughs> all uh, I also like kind of... Um, I. Uh, as Marianne said about like having to wear really big boots around the house, mm. it kind of goes with the irony of the idea of like Victorian children meant to be seen and not yeah, heard. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, but yeah. she's not. She's not meant to be seen. But she's definitely meant to be heard. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I really enjoyed like the slightly odd kind of things of it, but it's just, I, it's really n- nice and it's definitely some way. When I think of like childhood books that I really enjoyed, mm. Mm. like Goth Girl, Otterline, definitely. 
I loved Mr. Munro and Otterline. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were talking and I loved her odd shoe collection of only ever wearing <laughs> one shoe. Mm. One shoe or odd one, shoes? Well, odd shoes, odd but shoes. she put her other shoe on a shoe tree. Oh, right, okay. Right. So yeah. she always wore different pairs of shoes. It was very funny. I, I, year three me was <laughs> absolutely, I laughed for five minutes. That would be a, also that would be a wonderful character for World Book Day. Yeah. Yeah. Can you dress up as that? I dressed up as Goth Girl as for one book one mm. book day. Mm-hmm. Um, with her red cloak. My grandma made me a cloak oh, so I can be Goth Girl. Mm. Yeah. yeah. One of the best World Book Day. Mm. And did you oh. wear um, big boots? I think, I think I tried to, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not sure I own that many big pairs of boots. Everyone kept calling me Red Riding Hood all day. Oh, no. but uh, yeah, well, nothing, I get well. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about the World Book Day one? Because it's yeah. not one that I don't think many of us will be familiar yeah, what's with. what's that one? Um, well, what's she's she called? Goth Girl and the... And the Pirate Queen. Okay. She goes... I think she might... I'm not sure if she's in Brighton or not, but she gets invited to, like... A, um, she's invited to like this big ball, but it's like a costume contest, mm. and she stays with this lady who's a bit. It, she kind of is a bit like Cruella Deville, oh, a okay. little bit. Like she has basically with the thing that she's also obsessed with Dalmatians. Oh, um, okay. But yeah, she gets invited to a ball, mm. and she then. Yeah, she ends up um, getting some rock from the s- seaside. Um, you mean rock to eat? Yeah. yeah. But she does it as part of her costume and she right. dresses up as a mermaid. Oh. As part of her costume. <laughs> as you do. You know. As you do, yeah. And the woman who reminds me of a bit of Cruella de Vil just completely... <laughs> Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's a bit nicer than Cruella de Vil though. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but. Great. Yes, because of course, um, illustri- living in Brighton, you'd you'd um, be very aware of the Royal Pavilion, which of course is utterly fantastical. I mean, it looks like an Indian palace, and inside it's like a Chinese palace. And, <laughs> um, so all the sort of, but not. Gothic, it's the eastern trope of Gothic, it's, it's extraordinary. So, yeah. yeah, it's very opulent, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you, Josie. Josie. Thank, Thank you. you for bringing the books in. Yeah, actually. absolutely. Yeah, Look at them, they're beautiful. Beautiful yeah. hardback editions. Yeah. Did you have an exam today? Uh, no. Oh, well, that's even nicer. Well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for coming really in. Kind. Didn't have an exam. Yeah. Couldn't miss a lit sock on Christmas. Oh, oh wow. Well. Lovely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, right, any, uh, else? anyone else want to talk about, maybe a bit more about Otterline? Because you were talking about um, Miss Monroe earlier, I noticed. You want to talk a bit about Otterline, maybe? Yeah. Um, in your days, in your Annabelle, you said you haven't really read it, so no. have you? Have you not read Chris Riddell so much? How about, why doesn't one of us, I, I'll do it if no one else will, but why doesn't one of us read a bit of one we? of them? Maybe you can read a bit of Gothel and maybe a bit of Otterline? Yeah, why perhaps. Don't we? Why, why, would you maybe read us a bit of Goth Girl? Maybe yeah. just read us the opening of the first Goth Girl book. Just yeah. you know, first few pages or thereabouts. Ada Goth sat up in her eight-poster bed <laughs> and peered into the inky darkness. There it was again, a sigh, soft and sad, and ending a little squeak. Ada looked across the bedroom as she held up the candle and stepped out of bed. "Who's there?" she whispered. Ada was the only child of Lord Goth of Ghastly Gorm Hall, the famous cycling poet. <laughs> Her mother had been a beautiful tightrope walker from Thessalonica, so Thessalonica, whom Lord Goth had met and married on his travels. Unfortunately, Perthenope had been killed when Ada was still a baby while practising on the roof of Ghastly Gorm Hall during a thunderstorm. <laughs> Ghastly Gorm. Ghastly Gorm. Gorm Lord Gorm. Goth never talked about the terrible night. Instead, he stayed at home in his huge house, shut up away in his study, writing extremely long poems. When he wasn't writing, Lord Goff spent his time riding his hobby horse, Pegasus, around the grounds and taking pot shots at the garden ornaments with a blunderbuss. (laughs) 
Before long, he had acquired a reputation for being mad, bad and dangerous to gnomes. <laughs> since, the, since the accident, Lord Goff had taken to believing that children should be heard and not seen. He insisted that Ada wear big, clumpy boots whenever she walked down the corridors and passageways of Garsley Gorm Hall. That way, he could hear her footsteps approaching and avoid seeing her by ducking into his study where he wasn't to be disturbed. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, wordplay. He loves yes, his wordplay. Word oh, as we had for the Eurovision cartoon example there. But also, yeah, um, just like his good friend Neil Gaiman, lots of literary mm. allusion. Mm, I just realised yeah. there's, bu- there's a certain book I forgot to put on the table that he did with Neil Gaiman about art matters. Oh, that's right, art matters. That's downstairs. Yes. Maybe, maybe I'll go yeah. and get it in a minute. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's uh, mm. so, so much uh, fun to be had there, so much joy yeah. that he brings with wordplay. Yeah. So, you see, he's a great writer too, you know, because mm. obviously we, we tend to focus a lot on his illustration, but mm. the writing is but really no, good as well. He's very good. He's, yeah. uh, he's witty. Indeed. Yeah. Um, right, so uh, where's the first article? Is it, is it that one? No, it's a uh, yellow cat, isn't it? I think the first one, there it is. Yeah. Um, Who would like to read? Oh, God, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> right, so outline in a yellow cat. Let's see how this one begins. So we've got a pencil illustration at the beginning. Uh, home cooked meal co, okay. So, you know, um, yeah, we haven't got a... Well, I suppose that's kind of a... It's a bit smaller. You know, we just said about how the picture that began Goth Girl is mm. a nice summative picture. You know, so Artline's a bit of a different character, mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, there he is, down the bottom. Is that the star of the show for you? Yeah, Mr. Monroe, there he is. Uh, so, Otline lived on the 24th floor of the Pepper Pot building. It was called the P.W. Huffledink Tower, but it looked just like a pepper pot, so everyone called it the Pepper Pot Building. Here we go, and here's the illustration. The Pepper Pot Building, oh. the Shoebox Building, the Pointy Tower, the Ice Cream Cone Building, <laughs> the Clown's Hat Building, the Paul Stewart Third Building, and Grooveman's Korean Theatre. Uh, anyway, she lived in apartment 243 with Mr. Monroe, oh, who was small and hairy and didn't like the rain or having his hair brushed. Right, here we go. Here's a picture. There she is. A framed picture. Likes splashing in puddles and collecting things. Oh, right. That's so Artline. Kind of <laughs> Wait and mm-hmm. see. Well, I'm not going to read the whole thing, obviously. Uh, Mr. Monroe, small, hairy, and from a bog in Norway. Okay. <laughs> so there's Mr. Monroe. Um, Otterline, on the other hand, loved all kinds of weather, particularly rain, because she likes splashing in puddles. She also liked brushing Mr. Monroe's hair. So here you go, there's a source of conflict already. Mm-hmm. She found it very relaxing, and it helped her to think, especially if there was a tricky problem to solve or a clever plan to work out. So we should establish this about Otterline. She's kind of like, um, what's, what's the word, sort of a problem solver type. Yeah, sort of like, uh, anyone seen Inspector Gadget? You know, the girl who yeah. sort of helps him? Mm-hmm. I would say very much like him, like her, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Otterline likes solving tricky problems and working out clever plans even more than she likes splashing in puddles. Okay, so I'm reading it. <laughs> I'm going from what I remember before I reread it. She kept her eyes and ears open in case she came across anything unusual or interesting. So did Mr. Monroe. And here, here we go, and I'll finish with this. Otterline's notebook, where she jots down things she sees and works out clever plans. Oh, hello. And there's, oh, yeah, there's a mouse too. A mouse called Robert that Mr. Monroe came across in the kitchen last Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I do just flicking here. Look, look at all these lovely illustrations. Mm-hmm. Lots of detail. Yeah, so they're just so so much yeah. fun. They're so much fun and and yeah. and very enjoyable. And uh, and yeah, he did. So he did four of each, I believe. Is that right? Mm-hmm. I think four of our, four of our line four of Gothic. That's what we've got here. And he's, mm-hmm. he's moved on to other things, which mm-hmm. I'll talk about in a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just going to go and get that art matters book. I don't know if okay. while I'm gone if. Uh, I did find something while looking up Chris Riddell. I don't know if I'd be able to find it again. It was a poem from a book of his. I'm un- I'm not I'm unsure if he read it. I can try and find it on my iPad. Can't find it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought it was really good. Do you want to mm. you want to talk about it a bit? Because I'm interested to get this book. Do you want to maybe explain a bit what, what it is? What was it about? Can I can I try and find it first to see if I can? Go sit down here. Um, it was it was about. Um, It was about like childhood innocence, oh, okay. and and it was very. I thought it was very moving because when mm. I initially read it, I thought, oh, okay, that's, and that's like that's okay, I guess. Mm. But then and then when you read the last line, mm. can I find it? When you read the last night line, it just mm. gets really. 
Oh, here it is. Uh, really, like, deep, like, oh, suddenly. Okay. And okay. it just makes you think... Mm -hmm. um, just makes you think about it more. And mm -hmm. it's. I, I found that really interesting. It's from um, uh, Poems to Fall in Love With. Oh. Ah, yes, we have that. Oh, Mr. Trick there as well. <laughs> I'll go and get that. I'll go and get that. Uh, can I can I read the picture? Read this is this is a, it's it's pretty blurry. It's, so I don't know if I'll be able to. Read. Mr. Humphreys is getting the book. Oh, okay, cool. So, so it's about childhood. It's about it's about childhood and it's about uh, toys that you uh, that you, you once loved behind. and you once loved and leave behind, leave behind or something yeah. something like that. As yeah. far as I can remember, to be honest. Yeah. And sometimes you have to leave them behind if you're going to grow up. Yeah. yeah. It's very sad. Yeah, it is. I'm so. Do you want to sit in there? Uh, I, I, I don't know if well, I can. Mariam's copy is very blurry, so. I've, I've got. Could, a, oh, which one, which one is it in? Is it, it's uh, Poems to Fall in Love With. It's got an illustration of a <sighs> bear. I've got the other two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we have it. Sorry. Probably not in the uh, same place. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to take us ages now. That's slightly better. I don't picture. think he was a poet. Interesting. Well, it, I, I, I can't remember if he wrote it or if it was from an uh, anthology, but I right. I really enjoyed the poem. Yeah, I can't find oh, it. Oh, I picture. see, yes. So, so he's chosen and illustrated. Oh, interesting. She's prolific. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some quite familiar ones here. Mm. Yeah. In interestingly, a very difficult poem called Tissue by MTS Darker, where we used to study that for GCSE and e nobody ever got it. I did. No, you can't find Typically. it. Oh, okay. Well, Sorry, it's got an illustration of a bear, so if anyone wants to look it up and find a better picture than me. Hmm. Anyway, do you want to. Yeah, let's. Okay. Um, I tried. <laughs> oh, no, no, thank you. Right. Well, I'll blitz through these because it's mostly his other stuff. So, um, yeah. So these, let's start with these things. That's what we were just talking about. Yeah. So he has collected, um, po yeah, themed poems. Poems to save the world with. Mm -hmm. Poems to live your life by. Mm -hmm. Poems to fall in love with. Is that what it's called? Yeah, good anthologies. They are very yeah. good anthologies. And, of course, he gets very the... Very diverse poems. Very diverse classic poems. Yeah. So he are safe sounds, Carol Ann Duffy, mm -hmm. and brings his own complimentary... And the bright star, which is unique Keats. illustration. Yes, he's got yeah, like yeah, quite a, quite a range. Yeah. Keats. He's got Nick Cave in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the Jabberwocky. Mm -hmm. There we go. How appropriate. Yeah. So, seeing as we were just talking about. Bully Lake and the Slithy Toads. Mm -hmm. Did Gyre and Gimbal in the waves. There's, there's Keats again. Yeah. yeah. So the Jabberwocky. Let's see how he. There you go. There's the Jabberwocky. Oh, yeah. We did that in like year four or something. Yeah. Oh yes, no, you would have. It's brilliant for work, yeah. we're working out. No, it was year from, five. Yeah. Yeah, it's very. It, yeah, I think I did it when I was in primary mm. school as well. Mm. It's uh, it's I a classic did, yeah. one. We had to make up our own nonsense poems afterwards. And uh, who better than Chris Riddell to mm -hmm. do an illustration? So yeah, and uh, so that's to live your life by. And here's to save the world with. And what's he got in here? Let's get a few examples. We've got uh, troll song. <laughs> here's his <laughs> troll. There you go. Uh, and ooh, W. B. Yeats is it by? Any? It's the second coming. Second coming. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, there we go. So uh, now on to collaborations now. Then, mm. oh, actually no. First of all, he has got one more series which you may have heard of. Okay, Guardians of Magic. This is his new one. It's a duology. It's only two books, and this okay. is him going into high fantasy. Um, I haven't actually read it, so I can't really talk about it. Mm. The Cloudhouse Chronicles, um, but again female main character so mm -hmm. it's good that he does that good. It's, it's all always female main characters yeah. and here we go slightly inkier mm -hmm. drawings maybe yeah. but there you go oh, yeah. so again the world of Chris Riddell's imagination mm -hmm. everyone so we have the two of them here as well so yeah that's his that's his high fantasy now in terms of his collaborations I would say before goth girl his most famous book as an illustrator were, were the edge chronicles oh, anyone yes, heard of those yes. Which he did with Paul Stewart, yeah? I think you read them. I think I have, but I can't remember the details, so... So, basically, take your imagination to the edge. Quint, son of a Sky Pirate captain, the new apprentice to Linnaeus Palatix, the most high academic, 
Academy has been set some highly important tasks. Just how important? Quint is about to find out as he and Lan is his only daughter, Maris, are plunged to a terrifying adventure which takes them deep within the rock upon which Sagtafrax is built. Here they unwittingly invoke an ancient curse, the curse of the Gloam Glozer. And here's the Gloam Glozer. So obviously, Paul Stewart's the illustrator, um, and the illustrator is quite small actually. Mm-hmm. But again, it's it's wacky high fantasy. I think it's it's basically the Sky Galleons. It's like um, Sky Pirates, kind of. That's that's the premise, as I recall. I've read it for a long, long time. Um, it's so a bit like from Stardust. Then. Yes, a bit like yeah. that. Yeah. A bit like that. Um, and they're quite old now. Mm. When was this written? Twenty. 20- 2001 mm. this is the first in the series mm. so yeah those that, that's his most famous but of course yes he does collaborate with another of my favorites neil, neil gaiman yeah. no, i haven't met but uh, one day i will but i have been to we see have him, been event. To see him. Yes, yes indeed twice well i've been to twice but yeah we, we've been to see him mm-hmm. uh so i've talked about this one before right the silly mm. one yeah um so let's just talk about the illustrations because i've already explained to you the ridiculous story about what it's about but the first thing to point out is how much the main character looks like Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman, yes. The guy who goes on the crazy Crazy. story. And then, here we go, look, there's a very distinctive Mm. looking spaceship. Mm -hmm. And, oh, Sky Pirates, there you go. I I think Mr. Riddell likes getting involved in stories involving pirates in the sky, plus Stegosaurus is in the sky. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else is there? A volcano Mm -hmm. with a sort of, very Haitian looking mask Ooh, attached yes. to it. Um, and then there you go, here's the goth. Oh, yes. The gothic. The gothic. Yeah. Um, oh, there we go. And, and very handily, we have got um, a rose gallery at the back. We've oh, got the jungle yeah. gods. The milkman became. <laughs> Neil Gaiman became the jungle god. Jungle god. Um, there's the pirates. <laughs> And there we have. Philip became a god in the South Seas. Yes. Or Wumpires, as they are in this book. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot of recurring uh, obsessions here. I've just realised what Mr. Monroe reminds me of. It's uh, something in the Adams family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, very much so. Mm. Um, Galactic Police, which are dinosaurs. Because what, what better to have as a, as galactic police and dinosaurs? Yeah, what, what else you can have as galactic police? I know, right? Dine Wind Jones has um, dragons as galactic police. Same kind of vibe. Same kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, they're called worms actually in Hexwood. That's what they're called. <laughs> worms. That's the old-fashioned word. Then, of course, there's this wonderful book, oh, yes, the, graveyard the Graveyard Book. Yeah. And again, I'm not going to talk about it in great detail because we've talked about it many times Everybody before. Everybody should have read that by the end of year eight. Absolutely. So if you haven't read it, folks, read it. This, it's probably, a, if I had to pick one book on this table for you to all to read, it's this. Definitely. Hands down. Um, Goth look at that. that. Yeah, that's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what else have we got illustration-wise? Oh, look at that. Mm. Very atmospheric. Mm, very much so. And very gothic. <laughs> of course, it's the Graveyard Book. Um, let's, see, let's just see kind of. Oh, the dance macabre. Oh yes, building on um, a very ancient tale. Yeah. Uh, but I think what better to finish on than this collaboration? One that I came to mind: Art Matters. Yes. Yeah. Be bold, be rebellious. Choose art. It matters. It's it's a because your imagination can change the world. It's a mm. collaboration between Neil Gaiman and Chris Riddell on why art matters and why it's so important in all of our lives, and. Uh, shall I read a bit? It is Neil Gaiman's words. Oh, there he is. That's Chris Riddell. He's illustrated himself. Oh, yes. Doing some art. Um, I'll read a bit. It's Neil Gaiman's yeah. words, but uh, I believe that it is difficult to kill an idea because ideas are invisible and contagious and they move fast. I believe that you can set your own ideas against ideas you dislike. That you should be free to argue, explain, clarify, debate, offend, insult, rage, mock, sing, dramatize, and deny. I do not believe, so take note of the illustrations, mm. I do not believe that burning, murdering, exploding people, smashing their heads with rocks to let the bad ideas out, drowning them, or even defeating them will work to contain ideas you do not like. Ideas spring up where you do not expect them, like weeds, and there is difficult to control. I believe that repressing ideas spreads ideas. There he is again. Uh, I believe that people in books and newspapers are containers for ideas, but that burning people who hold the ideas will be as unsuccessful as firebombing in newspaper archives. It is already too late. It is always too late. The ideas are already out, hiding behind people's eyes, waiting in their thoughts. They can be whispered. They can be written on walls in the dead of night. They can be drawn. I think I'll stop there. So basically, 
just his way. Keep thinking, keep yeah. having ideas, keep drawing, keep writing. Yeah. As he will tell you. Yeah. And that's why Chris Riddell matters. Yeah. That's uh, in, uh, of course. Of course. All, all authors matter yes. very much for the ideas they share. Yeah, but Chris Riddell, for all the joy he brings us, for being yeah. a lovely man. We thank you. Chris and for writing this. Thank you. So thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, thank you, girls. And thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank okay, you. okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.